Hi everyone, it's Don, and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Well, right now I have 10 tips for you for the cruising industry that some people just might not even think about. My first tip I have for you is about the luggage tags you print out to put on your suitcase to give to the port attendants when you get to the cruise port. A lot of people are going, okay, I don't want to forget. So they put them into their clear plastic luggage tags and they put it on and then they head to the airport to go to their cruise. Don't put your luggage tags on before you fly. Many airlines will take them out because the barcodes on them will interfere with the barcode readers they have in their automated system when they're sending the luggage through. So you're just losing your luggage tags. Now you get to the airport at the other end and you no longer have your cruise luggage tags with you. So wait till you get back. Most people go and fly in the day before or if you're driving, that's fine, of course. But if you're flying in, don't attach till you come off the plane and then attach them or from your hotel room, put them on then and then go to the cruise port because they might just get ripped off and uh, who knows, <laughs> depending on the airline you're flying, you may end up sending your luggage tags to some place that had no idea where they were going and your suitcase along with them. Number two, the buffet or other food venues. While there is a, you know, you're not allowed to walk around with an open, bottle of whiskey or anything like that with you on cruise ships, you are allowed to go into a bar, order a drink and carry that drink out to the patio, uh, you know, up to the pool deck or even back to your room. Same thing goes for the buffet. You're very free to go up to the buffet, fill up some plates and bring it back to your room. No one will say a word. This is, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I like to have something to eat around 11 o'clock at night as I unwind from my day. But room service is like $8.95 for a delivery charge. Well, if the buffet's still open, you can go up to the buffet, make some plates, bring it down to your room, and eat it there. And no one will say a word. So if you don't want to pay that delivery charge to your room service, um, if you happen to be on a cruise that's charging for room service, just head up to the buffet, bring some down. That's how I do my evenings the majority of the times on my cruise. Number three is a person who doesn't drink very, very much. I don't usually get caught up in the souvenir cups. So on some cruise lines, they will have a souvenir cup and sometimes even a different cup every day for their drink of the day. So they'll put it on special with a souvenir cup. And of course, it's a higher price because you're getting the souvenir cup. And so people will go in and they'll buy their souvenir cup. And then the next day they want this drink of the day again, but it's there with a souvenir cup. You can always ask them for the drink of the day in a regular glass and it'll come much cheaper because you're not paying for the souvenir cup. Or bring the souvenir cup you had from the night before and have them, you know, fill it in the souvenir cup. They won't charge you for the new souvenir cup and often the souvenir cup is larger than the regular glass you would get and you get a larger drink for the same cost. They'll charge you not the souvenir cup price but the regular price. So. Just a little bit of tip to maybe, you know, cut down on the expenses and maybe you didn't want 10 souvenir cups from your cruise. You only wanted the one. Number four is for those of you who like to use the thermo suite. Now, if you don't know what a thermo suite is, thermo suites are the areas in the spa location that'll have a hot tub, they'll have saunas, a wading pool. Some of them will have salt rock rooms, steam rooms, ice rooms, a variety of different areas. You can go in and just, it's kind of like a relaxation area. You can pay by the half day, you can pay by the day, you can pay by the week. So if you're a person, say you're going on a cruise uh, like I am to Alaska, I'm going on a 15, uh, 16 day cruise. So if I'm going on a 16 day cruise and I was going to use the thermal spa every day, I was going to have to pay for it for the whole every day. I might want to look at booking their aqua class stateroom, which is only a couple hundred dollars more than the regular stateroom is, but it gives you access to the thermal suite as part of the package of that cabin. So if you're a person who thinks they're going to use that a lot, then maybe look at the actual spa classes of the cruise ships you're going to 
because you could end up saving a few hundred dollars just by booking that that stateroom. And who doesn't like to save a few hundred dollars? Number five, while we're on the topic of the spa, if you happen to be sharing a cabin with four or five people, the shower could be the issue. Getting in, getting clean, getting refreshed in the morning, getting ready for your excursions, or just getting ready for a day with five people in a cabin sharing the same small bathroom, uh, you, you might have to wait a while for to use the, the facilities, if you will, or use the showers. If you're near the spa, you can always go down to the spa. Now, we're not talking the thermal area, but they do have showers in the changing rooms that you're more than welcome to use at no charge. So you could head down, shower, refresh yourself, and, you know, it, it cuts down on the line that you would have in your own stateroom when you're sharing it with a large group. Number six, the coffee shops on board. There's plenty of coffee shops all over the ships. There's Starbucks on some ships, but there's always a specialty coffee area somewhere. And they always have these sandwiches and treats around and everyone looks and oh, those are really good. A lot of people don't realize those snacks and treats are included in the cost of your cruise fare. Only the specialty coffees is what they're charging extra for. So if you feel like you just want a sandwich or something and you happen to be in, the, say, the Piazza of the Princess Cruise Line, just head over to the coffee shop, grab a sandwich, grab a snack, grab a cake. It's all included in the cost of your cruise. Number seven, many cruise lines during the cruise will have a specialty dining lunch where, for instance, on Princess, on certain days, they will have a pub lunch in the specialty dining, the steakhouse. So, and it's complimentary. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So you can go down, stand in line, get in, have a specialty restaurant for free on the cruise. Many cruise lines have this throughout the industry. So check to see, it's always in your cruise planner. They always announce it. And it just gets you away from the buffet, say for a lunch. Number eight, if you're a person who has a hard time sleeping in a strange bed or, you know, when you're away from home and the mattress doesn't quite feel comfortable as it would in your own home, well, you can always ask for bedding. You can always ask for top sheets. Most cruise lines even have the eight crate mattress toppers that they will bring to your stateroom. Uh, you, you know, even pillows uh, if you're allergic to certain types of pillows they will exchange them. They have a variety on board for just such an occasion. So if there's something that you want for your bedding, go ahead and ask your steward. They just might have it. Number nine, in the main dining, every night when you go there, they have a, a few staples that are there every day, but they always have interchangeable where they'll change out. One night it'll be a steak. The next night it'll be a fish dinner. The next night it'll be a chicken or a duck. They always change up the menu. And if you're thinking, well, I'd like to, I go to the main dining, but I'm going to do one or two specialty dining restaurants during my cruise. Uh, but, you know, if they're going to have duck one night, I want to try the duck. I don't want to have, miss that. Go down to the purser's desk because they often have the menus for the main dining rooms already made for the entire week. So you can go check out what the menu will be in the purser's office and then book your specialty dining on a night where you doesn't look very particularly appetizing for you in the main dining room. This way you don't miss out the specialty meals like lobster night or duck a la range or a special dessert that you were looking for in the main dining and you still get to experience your specialty dining when you want to do it. Finally, number 10, speaking of the main dining room, as I said, the menu changes all the time. And if you don't see something you like on the menu, ask your steward if there's other options. They often will make you, so say it does, there, there's no steak or anything on the menu that night, they will often make you a steak or make you chicken or make you a fish dinner. They will make you something. They have other options, even if it's not on the menu, they will be able to prepare you something. So if you don't see anything on the menu, which is rare, but some people do not see, you can order something else. And if something comes to your plate that you don't like, ask it to be exchanged and get something else. They don't mind, they will do it. It's, it's kind of their job. So don't worry about ordering 
second appetizer or a third appetizer. Don't worry about sending a food back because you didn't like the taste and order. I didn't like this chip, this steak. It seems a little stringy. Can I get the chicken instead? No problem. They'll do it. Don't be shy. You have to enjoy your meal. You have to enjoy the cruise and the staff in the restaurant want you to be happy because they want their gratuities at the end of the cruise. And if you're not happy with the main dining, you might just go and say, you know what? I don't think I should tip for bad food. And so they want to make you happy, as happy as can be. So don't worry about changing a menu, asking for anything special, or just returning something because it's not very good. There you go. There's 10 tips that might, you know, you might make save some money on a thermal spa. You might not lose your luggage, <laughs> you, you know, oh, and you might just enjoy a meal better in the dining room. So a few tips to go around. Hope you liked them. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button till next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.